Good afternoon. My name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And today we're continuing our series on bringing revival to your country, your world, your community. And I'm sharing from my book, um, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times. And today we are going to talk about Chapter 6, Words Rule in the Kingdom. The Word is the basis for everything. By the Word you got saved. There's nothing so great in this world that the Word of God cannot change. Uh, let's take a look at Genesis 1, 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, by the Word. And the Word was made flesh, uh, John 1, 4. And Genesis 1, 3 and 4 talks about that, that God said and then God saw. You see, words create things. Jesus was the Word. The Word became. The Word is spiritual. The spiritual thing. The Word became flesh. So, spiritual things make flesh. Make made the whole earth. In Genesis one, three, it says God said, and then God saw everything. God said, God saw, and then it continues to say we are created in His image. Uh, words control our physical body and our and the spiritual realm. In 1 Peter 3, 2, it says, not, if somebody is not stumbling in word, he's mature, he's able to control his whole body. So you can control your whole body, every sickness and every disease, every tormenting spirit, everything of fear um, can be controlled with words. Okay. Um, the word is alive. God, the word says that the word is alive and it causes spiritual to become physical. The Word of God is quick and powerful and alive and double, uh, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts. So you see, the Word is spiritual and it touches the physical realm. That's Hebrews 4.12. John 17.17 17 says the Word is truth. Angels um, do their work according to the words that you speak out of your mouth, which is Hebrews 1.14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth? to minister for those who will be heirs of salvation, and that's us. And later on in this book, and I'll show you that they hearken unto the word of the, the Lord. Um, the Lord has prepared his throne in heavens, and, and his kingdom ruleth over all. The kingdom of God is in you. Bless the Lord, his angels, who excel in strength, that do his commandment. And that's his word. You fight the devil with words, and in Matthew 4 and 4 through 10, Jesus said, It is written every time the devil tempted him, the word is the sword of the Spirit. And that's also in Galatians 6, 14 and 17. The word of God is the Spirit, and you're to pray always in the Spirit. That's in tongues. And when you speak the word out of your mouth, the word in the Bible doesn't help you and is not a sword to use against the enemy or to take territory from the enemy except that it comes out of your mouth. The word is seed. Seed is to reproduce itself into harvest. And that's in Isaiah 55, 10. It says, uh, brings forth bud, and that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but shall accomplish that which I, um, which I please and prosper in the thing I sent it. Um, the word being seed is to produce a harvest and more seeds. And um, that's Proverbs, i got to sneeze, 18, 20, and 21. Uh, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. <laughs> got to sneeze. And with increase of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. Everything in this world is in the power of our tongue. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. Uh, we are born, again, by incorruptible seed, 1 Peter 1, 23, which is words. We are God's garden, according to 1 Corinthians 3, 9. We're laborers with God. We're God's garden because we're made out of dirt, and dirt is meant to hold seed, which produces a harvest, which produces fruit, and this all comes from lips, from our lips, from mouth that we, our mouth when we speak. Um, Genesis 2, 7 says we are God's garden. Um, the seed go, goes into our heart and comes out of our mouth and produces a harvest. Um, we honor God by speaking only His words. Uh, Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. 
Matthew 12, 37 says, By the words of your mouth you will be justified and condemned. You get saved by speaking and asking Jesus to come into your uh, life by your words of your mouth. So words, if you get born again and become a new creature, a, a child of God through speaking words, then everything else comes through words. Um, by words, let's see, um, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God. Okay, Ephesians 5, 6, and, and 7. And also, a good one I found is Isaiah 58, you shall honor him by not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasures, not speaking your own words. Our words are so powerful that we rule the earth with words. Proverbs 2, 7, he that speaks truth shows forth righteousness. Proverbs 6, 9, a false witness uh, doesn't lie. Um, Romans 10, 5, by righteousness, which is a faith he speaks. We speak by faith. We speak the word to get saved. Romans 10, 9, the world was created by speaking it into existence. That's Genesis 1, 6, and 26, and Psalms 33, 6, and 9. The kingdom of God operates by words. That's the sower sows the words, Mark 4, 13, and 20. And we are to say what we want. We're never, ever supposed to say what we don't want. We're supposed to say what we want because in uh, Mark 11, 23, and 24, we can have what we say. And God satisfies our mouth with good things, Psalms 103, 5. So we have to speak the word. Um, uh, let's see. The word equips you for life, Mark 4, 13, and 20. The word is... Um, seed and seed uh, produces a harvest and the sower sows the word and the seed does not produce a harvest because of number one not having understanding number two not having a root of love and when trials persecutions tribulations and afflictions come they're offended by the way they come from the devil and allowing yourself to be overtaken by the cares of this world or the deceitfulness of riches or the desire for other things and the other things might not necessarily be bad it's just that they have more value to you and your use of time than God and His Word. Uh, okay. And the Word is created to produce harvest. And uh, Psalm 67, 5, we already talked about how we are God's garden and we are created out of dirt and the Word is seed. The Word goes in our heart. We have what we sow. We reap what we sow. So you sow the Word in your heart and then you produce a harvest, a uh, fruit. He is the vine and we're the branches and we produce fruit. And fruit is having what God says we should have because we speak what he says we should have. And we produce a harvest. It's not just good moral character. It's also uh, power and bringing God's will to earth. Um, and that's basically some of the stuff, that's the stuff I wanted to cover on that chapter. You'll have to, to read it yourself. It goes into a lot more detail uh, in that chapter and other chapters that um, follow up on that. So my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and that was a little bit on words and there's so many good books out there on words um, that I really didn't need to put too much in mind. Um, so I will talk to you tomorrow about a different chapter. And I'm Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and I'm out.